the next topic we would discuss is operational amplifiers operational amplifiers commonly known as op amps are very high gain amplifier circuits which has got two high impedance input terminals and one impedance that is low impedance output the input terminals are identified as inverting input and non inverting input the basic op amp circuit consists of a differential amplifier input stage in the beginning a level shifting intermediate stages and an emitter follower output stage operational amplifiers can be employed for many circuit applications by using various combinations of externally connected components the simplest of these are the voltage followers the non inverting amplifiers and the inverting amplifiers let's look at the circuit symbol and the terminals associated with op amps in circuit symbol of an op amp there are two input terminals and one output terminal and there are two power supply terminals these are plus and minus supply voltages that is plus vcc and minus vee and typically these values range from plus or minus 5 to plus or minus 22 volts the input terminals are designated as inverting input which is nothing but the minus sign and the non inverting input which is nothing but the positive sign a positive going voltage applied to the inverting input produces a negative going output that is an inverted output and a positive going signal at the non inverting input generates a positive going output which is a non inverted output before we understand the operation of an op amp we must learn about the op amp characteristics so let's look at the ideal op amp characteristics so when we look at the characteristics of it the first characteristics is infinite input impedance which is nothing but rn so there is zero input current zero output impedance r out infinite bandwidth infinite open loop gain which is nothing but g which is nothing but v out by vn infinite common mode re rejection ratio infinite slew rate and zero input offset voltage and it has got infinite power supply rejection ratio let's see these one by one in detail first we'll have a look at the input impedance which is usually denoted as zn input impedance is defined as the input voltage by the input current the input impedance of an ideal op amp is infinite that is there is no current flowing inside the circuit however a practical op amp has certain current flowing in the input circuit of the magnitude of few picoamps to few milliamps let's look into output impedance which is denoted as z out output impedance is defined as the ratio of output voltage to the input current the output impedance of an ideal op amp is zero however in reality op amps have an output impedance of almost 10 to 20 kilo ohms an ideal op amp behaves like a perfect voltage source delivering the current without any internal losses the internal resist uh, resistance reduces the voltage available to the load the next parameter is bandwidth an ideal op amp has an infinite bandwidth that is it can amplify any signal from dc to the highest ac frequencies without any losses so therefore an ideal op amp is said to have infinite frequency response in real op amps the bandwidth is generally limited the limit depends on the gain bandwidth product which we call it as gb which is defined as the frequency where the amplifier gain becomes unity the next characteristics is open loop voltage gain which is denoted as a the open loop voltage gain without any feedback for an ideal op amp is infinite but typical values of open loop voltages gain for a real op amp ranges from 20000 to 2 lakh let the input voltage be v in a be the output voltage gain then the output voltage is v out is equal to a into v in the value is typically in the range specified above but for an ideal op amp it is infinite so next characteristics is common mode rejection ratio common mode refers to the situation when the same voltage is applied both 
to the inverting and the non-inverting terminal of the op-amp. The common mode rejection refers to the ability of the op-amp to reject the common mode signals. The common mode rejection ratio refers to the measure of the ability of the op-amp to reject the common mode signals. Mathematically, it is defined as CMRR equal to AD divided by ACM, where AD is the differential gain of the op-amp, which is usually infinity for an ideal op-amp, and ACM, which refers to the common mode gain of the op-amp. CMRR of an ideal op-amp is infinite. That means it is able to reject all the common mode signals. Also from the formula, we can see that the AD is infinite for an ideal op-amp and ACM is zero. Therefore, the CMRR of an ideal op-amp is infinite. Therefore, it will reject any signal which is common to both the terminals. However, real op-amp have finite CMRR and does not reject all common mode signals. So the next characteristic is slew rate. The output of an operational amplifier can only change by a certain amount in a given time. This limit is called as the slew rate of the op-amp. And although the slew rate is not often mentioned, it can be critical factor in ensuring that an amplifier is able to provide an output that is a faithful representation of the input. The op-amp slew rate can limit the performance of a circuit if the slew rate requirement is exceeded. It can also distort the waveform and prevent the input signal being faithfully represented at the output. Therefore, the slew rate of an op-amp or any amplifier circuit is nothing but the rate of change in the output voltage caused by a step change of the input. It is measured as a voltage change in a given time. So typically the units would be volts per microseconds or volts per milliseconds. So slew rate distortion. If an op-amp is operated above its slew rate limit, signals will become distorted. The easiest way to see this is to look at the example of a sine wave. The maximum rate of voltage change occurs at the zero crossing point. Maximum rate of change of sine wave occurs at the zero crossing point. This point is where the slew rate limitations are most likely. It is possible to find the maximum frequency or the voltage that can be accommodated. A sine wave with a frequency of Hertz and peak voltage of V volts requires an operational amplifier with a slew rate of 2 pi F V volts per second. This is required to ensure that the maximum slew rate requirement which occurs at the zero crossing point can be met. So op-amp sleeving distortion. As can be seen in the diagram, the limit, the op-amp sleeving distortion will result in the creation of a triangular waveform. If the frequency is increased, the op-amp will be less able to keep up and therefore the amplitude of the output waveform will decrease. The slew rate may also not be linear over the old range. As a result, the waveform might exhibit a faster rise for the first part of the change, then reverting to the more expected slew rate. So let's look at the slew rate calculation and the formulas related to it. It is relatively easy to calculate the slew rate of an amplifier that is required for a particular application from the knowledge of the maximum voltage and the frequency required. To give a distortion-free operation, the sleeve rate of the amplifier, the simple formula below can be used. That is, sleeve rate equal to 2 pi F V, where sleeve rate is measured in volts per second, although the actual measurements are often given in volts per microseconds. F is the highest signal frequency measured in hertz. V is the maximum peak voltage of the signal. As an example, take the scenario where an op-amp is required to amplify a signal with peak amplitude of 5 volts at a frequency of 25 kilohertz. An op-amp with a slew rate of at least 2 into pi into 25,000 into 5, that is nothing but 0.785 volts per microseconds would be required. So next parameter is offset voltage. The offset voltage of an ideal op-amp is 0. 
which means that the output voltage will be the zero if the difference between the inverting and the non-inverting terminal is zero. If both the terminals are grounded, the output voltage will be zero. But in most op-amps, the output will not be zero when off, but there will be a minute voltage from it. So next characteristic is power supply rejection. The output of a perfect operational amplifier will be completely dependent from its power supply. Every real operational amplifier has a finite power supply rejection ratio known as PSRR that reflects how well the op-amp can reject the changes in its power supply voltage. Temperature effects. All parameter changes with temperature. Temperature drift of the input offset voltage is especially important. Let's look at the applications of op-amp. Operational amplifiers are part particularly versatile circuit blocks. They find applications in a host of different circuits where there are attributes of high gain, high input impedance, low output impedance and a differential input enable them to provide a high performance circuit with a minimum of components. By using the negative and sometimes the positive feedback around the op-amp chip, they can be used in many applications and circuits to provide a variety of different functions from the amplifiers and filters to oscillators, integrators and many other functions. There are many op-amp circuits that cover most of the main analog functions that are needed. As a result of this, operational amplifiers have become the workhorse of the analog electronics designer. Op-amp inverting amplifier circuit. The basic diagram of an op-amp inverting operational amplifier circuit is quite straightforward and only needs a few components beyond the operational amplifier integrated circuit itself. The circuit consists of a resistor from the input terminal to the inverting input of the circuit and another resistor connected from the output to the inverting input of the op-amp as a feedback. The non-inverting input is connected to the ground, so which can be seen as shown in the figure. Inverting amplifier gain. One of the main feature of the inverting amplifier circuit is the overall gain that is it produces. This is quite easy to calculate. The voltage gain which is denoted as AV is actually the output voltage V out divided by the input voltage V in. It is the number of times the output voltage is larger than the input voltage. It is also easy to determine the equation for the voltage gain. As the input of the op-amp draws no current, this means that the current flowing through the resistors R1 and R2 is the same. Using the Ohm's law, V out by R2 will be equal to minus V in by R1. Hence, the voltage gain of the circuit AV can be taken as AV equal to minus R2 by R1 where AV is the voltage gain, R2 is the feedback resistor value, R1 is the input resistor value. As an example, an amplifier requiring a gain of 10 could be built by making R2 as 47 kilo ohms and R1 as 4.7 kilo ohms. We shall discuss now about the virtual ground concept. As the name suggests, virtual ground is making a node or a connection virtually at ground. By the term virtual ground, I mean it is not physically connected to the ground, but the voltage at that point or at that node is 0 volts. So we refer to it as the ground. This concept is used for the analysis of operational amplifier circuits. It makes analysis of op-amp based circuits very easy. So let us look what happens in a virtual ground. Virtual ground concept considers an inverting op-amp configuration with a negative feedback. Referring to the ideal op-amp parameters, input impedance is infinity. So ideally there is no current which flows through the op-amp. As there is no current flowing through the op-amp, the current flowing through the node A will be 0. And by Ohm's law, we could conclude that V into A is equal to 0 and V is equal to I into R. As I is 0, perhaps 
v will also be 0. Another example to understand the virtual ground concept is for ideal op amp configuration differential input voltage is 0 that is v non inverting terminal minus v inverting terminal equal to 0. So, ideally v inverting terminal should be equal to v non inverting terminal. In an inverting configuration v non inverting is connected to ground and as v n inverting that is as v inverted terminal is equal to v non inverted terminal and v non inverted is equal to 0 obviously v inverted terminal will also be at 0. Ground is nothing but a point with a voltage 0 as voltage at these terminals is 0 we can refer them as virtual ground they are not physically connected to the ground but as they possess 0 voltage they are termed as ground. An important thing to be noted here is the virtual ground concept is applied only during the analysis of the negative feedback or the inverting configuration of the op amp. There are few points to remember about an inverting amplifier. An inverting amplifier circuit employs a negative feedback and produces an inverted output with respect to the input. The gain of an inverting amplifier is thus indicated as a negative. The voltage gain of an inverting amplifier is independent of the op amp open loop gain which is very large. The voltage gain of an inverting amplifier depends upon the resistor values used and hence the gain can be accurately controlled by choosing the values of R1 and the feedback resistance RF appropriately. If the feedback resistance RF is greater than R1 then the gain will be greater than 1. If the input resistance R1 is greater than RF then the gain will be less than 1. If the feedback resistance is equal to the input resistance the gain will be unity. Thus the output voltages can be greater than less than or equal to the input voltage in magnitude and it is always 180 degree out of phase. Non-inverting amplifier. A non-inverting amplifier is an op amp circuit in which the produces an amplified output signal. This output signal of non-inverting op amp is in phase with the input signal. In other words, a non-inverting amplifier behaves like a voltage follower circuit. A non-inverting amplifier also uses the negative feedback connection, but instead of feeding the entire output signal back to the input, only a part of the output signal is fed back as input to the inverting input terminal of the op amp. The high input impedance and the low output impedance of the non-inverting amplifier makes the circuit ideal for impedance buffering applications. Looking at the non-inverting amplifier circuit, the circuit diagram of an ideal non-inverting amplifier is as shown. As you can see from the circuit, it can be seen that the output voltage is potentially divided across the resistors R1 and R2 before it is applied to the inverting input. When the non-inverting input is connected to the ground that is Vn equal to 0, the voltage at the inverting input terminal must also be at ground level. If not at any voltage, if not any voltage difference between the input terminals, these would be amplified to move the inverting input terminal back to the ground level because of the concept of the virtual ground. Since the inverting input terminal is at ground level, the junction of the resistors R1 and R2 must also be at the same ground level. This implies that the voltage drop across R2 will be 0. As a result, the current flowing through R1 and R2 must be the same. Thus, there is some zero voltage drop across R1 and therefore, the output voltage is equal to the input voltage which is nothing but zero volts. When a positive going input signal is applied to the non-inverting input terminal, the output voltage will shift to keep the inverting input terminal equal to that of the input voltage applied. Hence, there will be a feedback voltage developed across the resistor R2. That is you can call VR2 equal to VN which is nothing but I2 into R2 where I2 is the current flowing at the junction of the resistors R1 and R2 
and we can call V out equal to I2 into R1 plus R2. So let us look at the voltage gain of a non-inverting operational amplifier. From the above equations of V in and V out, the closed loop voltage gain of the non-inverting amplifier can be calculated as ACL is equal to V out by V in, which is equal to I2 into R1 by R2, the complete thing divided by I2 R2. So which is equal to R1 plus R2 divided by R2. So we can write ACL as 1 plus R1 by R2. The above gain equation is positive, indicating that the output is in phase with the applied input signal. The closed loop voltage gain of a non-inverting amplifier is determined by the ratio of the resistance R1 and R2, which is used in the circuit. Practically, non-inverting amplifiers will have a resistor in series with the input voltage source to keep the input current same at both the terminals. Let us discuss about the virtual short. In a non-inverting amplifier, there exists a virtual short between the two input terminals. A virtual short is a short circuit for the voltage, but an open circuit for the current. The virtual short uses two properties of an ideal op amp. Since the input impedance Rn is infinite, the input current at both the terminals is zero. And since the AOL, that is the open loop gain is infinite, the difference voltage V1 minus V2 is always zero. Although virtual short is an ideal approximation, it gives accurate values when used with heavy negative feedback. As long as the op amp is operating in the linear region and not in any saturated or negatively, the open loop voltage gain approaches infinity and a virtual short exists between the two input terminals. Because of the virtual short, the inverting input voltage follows the non-inverting input voltage. If the non-inverting input voltage increases or decreases, the inverting input voltage immediately increases or decreases to the same value. So this action is often referred to as bootstrapping. There are few points to be remembered here about the non-inverting amplifier. A non-inverting amplifier uses a voltage divider bias negative feedback connection. The voltage gain is always greater than 1. Voltage gain is positive indicating that for an AC input, the output is in phase with the input signal and for DC input, the output polarity is same as the input polarity. The voltage gain of a non-inverting op-amp depends only on the resistor values and is independent of the open loop gain of the op-amp. The desired voltage gain can be obtained by choosing the appropriate values of the resistors. Let us look at voltage follower circuit. Voltage follower is one of the simplest uses of an op-amp, where the output voltage is exactly same as the input voltage which is applied to the circuit. In other words, the gain of an voltage amplifier circuit is unity. The output of the op-amp is directly connected to the inverting input terminal and the input voltage is applied to the non-inverting input terminal. The voltage follower like a non-inverting amplifier has very in high input impedance and very low output impedance. The circuit diagram of a voltage follower is as shown. It can be seen that the above configuration is same as the non-inverting amplifier circuit with an exception that there are no resistors being used. The gain of a non-inverting amplifier is given as ACL equal to 1 plus R1 by R2. In the voltage follower, the resistor R1 is equal to 0 and R2 is infinite. So the gain of the voltage follower will be equal to 1. A voltage follower is also commonly known as unity gain buffer. The voltage follower or the unity gain buffer circuit is commonly used to isolate different circuits. That is to separate one stage of the circuit from the another and also it is used in impedance matching applications. In practice, the output voltage of the voltage follower will not be exactly equal to the input voltage applied and there will be a slight difference. This difference is due to the high internal voltage gain of the op-amp. A few things to be noted. The open loop voltage gain of an op-amp is infinite 
and the closed loop voltage gain of the voltage follower is unity. This implies that carefully selecting the feedback components, we can accurately control the gain of a non-inverting amplifier.